Ready? Okay. Happy New Year. Thanks for joining us here. and Thanks for joining us online. So tonight we're going to do something a little different, uh, a presentation I haven't done before. Um, you know how like when an artist gets mad about something, they write a song. When I get mad about something, I write a PowerPoint. So <laughs> this PowerPoint presentation is specifically about the Gonstead system that we do. And the reason that I'm doing it is because I was kind of disappointed in chiropractors, but also in myself for, for not explaining this to some of my snowbirds. So some of our, our patients who, who, especially who came in recently before leaving for the winter, I didn't have a chance to really educate them on what's the difference between your average Joe chiropractor down the street and a Gonstead chiropractor, which is the technique that we do, what's the difference? And, and I think um, it was probably more important than, you know, I should have put more importance on it because what I'm getting now is uh, I'm getting calls and texts from these patients that I spent time looking on the website to try and find a referral, a, a Gonstead doc in the area that they were going to be so that there would be somebody there that we could trust to take care of them and continue the work that we started here. But the reports that I'm getting back is, I don't think this guy does Gonstead. You know, well, this dude was on the website. He says he does Gonstead. It ended up being, <laughs> if you can't read it, uh, it, it ended up being a crack house, you know, where, where they're just doing cracks on people they're, uh, they're not doing any specific work. They're not even doing any analysis whatsoever. So I want people to be able to look at uh, a chiropractor or a technique and be, be able to make that distinction. Does this guy do a specific technique? Does he do chiropractic? When I say specific um, and chiropractic in the same, in the same sentence, okay, th those two have to go hand in hand. B.J. Palmer, the guy who who developed the the tech or the uh, chiropractic, um, his dad founded it, but B.J. developed it. B.J. wrote a book called Subluxation Specific Adjustment Specific. Okay, meaning when I assume that everybody sitting here knows what a subluxation is. Okay, cool. And did I, I explained it to you, right? So when that bone goes out of its normal position, and I have the little models here so that we can kind of look at the disc closer in between there. When that bone goes out of position and it, and it closes down those holes in the back, okay, it deforms that disc, and then it'll heal. It'll heal in that position. So the fact that there's a malposition there, and here on Earth we have three spatial dimensions so that that bone can go backward, it can go, you know, right, left, it, it can tip. Three dimensions of that misalignment have to be figured out. That's specificity, okay? And then the adjustment has to take into account those three dimensions if we're going to correct that and get it back to the neutral position. So that's specificity as opposed to a general manipulation or something of that nature. So BJ said in that book, um, chiropractic is either specific or it's nothing okay meaning if you go to a chiropractor and they're not doing a specific analysis and a specific adjustment if they're not addressing that specific subluxation they're not doing chiropractic okay that's not to say that they're not helping people because most of the general manipulations are osteopathy and we will talk a little bit about that and again, that increases blood flow. There's, there's in, increases mobility. In, you know, there's benefits there. He's just saying it's not chiropractic. That's, that's not what we do. Okay. So Dr. Gonstead graduated from chiropractic college back in 1924. So he was trained by actually Didi's people and BJ's people. Didi was on his way out. His people were still there teaching, uh, full spine toggle, which is, a specific technique where they would uh, toggle the subluxation. So set up on it, put the force in, and then bring their hands off and, and let your body just rebound and let your body adjust that subluxation, pull that in. 
So doc, Dr. Gonstead was trained in that, but he was also trained by BJ's people at the time who were doing upper cervical, like specific one bone upper cervical. Okay. So that's where, where Dr. Gonstead came out of. But as a child, he had, uh, rheumatoid arthritis and he went to a chiropractor, a specific upper cervical guy who adjusted him and actually, you know, cured him, fixed him of his rheumatoid arthritis. So he was, uh, as a young adult, he was a, a mechanical engineer. Okay. So his brain worked on principles of loading and physics. And he was the first guy to really apply that to the spine, looking at a full spine x-ray, looking at the disc, which loads gravity. Okay. And what we can do to make our adjustment more specific and how we can make our adjustment affect that disc better. So those were all things that were attributed to Dr. Gonstead in the chiropractic realm. Okay. So you have to understand first, if I know all you guys do, but if you're watching at home and when I said subluxation, you were like, what the heck's a subluxation? Okay, subluxation is when there's a misalignment in the spine. Okay, those bones of the spine are there protecting those nerves. If we have a misalignment of the spine that then closes down a hole or occludes a, a hole where a nerve comes out and it's putting pressure on that nerve, basically it's choking off information going from the brain out to the body. Okay, so that's going to cause something. If it's a nerve that's going out to the kidneys, maybe it causes you know, kidney problems like a high blood pressure or a kidney failure or something of that nature. If it's going to the heart, maybe it changes the blood pressure or the heart rate. You, you get the picture there. If that subluxation is choking off a nerve going somewhere, wherever that nerve goes, we're probably going to have a symptom. Okay. So if you understand that subluxation, like I said, that misalignment is three dimensional. There's, there's usually, you know, vectors that we have to take into consideration in that subluxation if we're going to be able to correct it. We have to address all three of those, uh, vectors if we're going to get that bone back to its position. Okay. So that's a specific adjustment. Um, <clears throat> you can have pressure without pain. And unfortunately, what most chiropractors do is they just look for the pain. Okay, somebody comes in and they say, okay, if you know, filled out on your, on your intake form that you have low back pain, what they're going to do is what I call the flying seven. And we don't do the flying seven. I'll reiterate that. But um, basically a general manipulation of all the joints in the spine. And that's the feedback that I'm getting back from some of our snowbirds is, this guy does this. He lays me on my side. He grabs my butt. He grabs my shoulder. He wrenches me out one way, flips me over, rings me out the other way, puts me on my face, does three cracks up the middle, puts me on my back, spin my head left, spin it right. And that's just a general manipulation of every joint in the spine. Okay. Now, like I said, it'll increase blood flow. It'll increase, you know, lymph flow. It'll probably release endorphins that are going to kill pain. There's going to be some benefit to it. Okay. But is it going to correct the subluxation? Again, if we've got that subluxation and we can see that, okay, that bone is tipped back. It's, it's L4. That's the problem. That bone is tipped like this and then it's rotated and, and, and laterally flexed like this. We've got three dimensions of that misalignment figured out. But if I lay that person on their side and I grab their butt down below it and their shoulder up above it and I just wrench out like that, guaranteed the subluxation is actually a fixation it doesn't move because it's healed in a bad position. Okay. So I'm, I'm guaranteeing you that subluxation isn't moving, but everything around it will move because those segments are compensations. They're hypermobile. Okay. So again, just knowing the difference between a specific adjustment and a general manipulation, long lever, a lot of rotation, that's a manipulation. Short lever, meaning that that chiropractor is getting a hold of one specific point on that bone and either using this bone in his hand or a finger or a thumb and just moving that bone individually, that's an adjustment. So if you have somebody, you know, grabbing a shoulder and grabbing a hip and jumping on people, that's not a specific adjustment. And I want people to be able to know, okay, 
I went to this guy down the street. I got good results. Oof, chief. I got good results, but this is what he was doing. And then they come here and they're like, aren't you going to do the other side? That's like one of the common questions that I get because I'll just adjust that one subluxation three-dimensionally how it needs to go. And then they're wondering, well, what, what about the other side? Are you going to jump on me the other way? Well, if I just corrected that subluxation by doing it this way, I flip you over and do it the other way. What am I going to do? I'm going to put it right back where it was. So I want people to be able to understand the difference there in a subluxation and a manipulation. But most chiropractors are just looking at that pain and that general manipulation. A lot of times, like I said, it's going to release endorphins and, uh, and keflins, those, those chemicals in your body that actually do kill pain. Okay. But it's not going to correct that subluxation. So it's a good start, but there's a, a more accurate way of addressing those subluxations. So in the Gonstead system, we use seven different tools or, or steps of analysis. Um, I think most chiropractors, again, the feedback that I'm getting is this guy didn't do any analysis. He didn't do any x-rays. He didn't really even ask me any questions. He laid me down on the bench. He cranked me one way. You know, he did that flying seven. So if you go to a chiropractor, if you're in Florida or Arizona right now watching this and you were here and you're going to a chiropractor right now and you're wondering, does this guy do the same technique as Dr. John? First off, does he do an analysis? Okay. What I always do is I'll usually watch the person walk. Okay. Visualization is one of the one of the tools that we use because I can tell just by the way somebody walks or the way they go from standing to seated if, for example, there's a hip that's not moving right, okay? You can see that in a person. Um, symptomatology, are they asking you, you know, about not just the pain, but there's also functional parts of that same nerve. Like if we're looking at low back pain, yeah, that pain-sensitive nerve might go down the leg, but there are functional nerves from that same area that go to the bowel and the bladder, and the male or the female organs, those things, are, are they asking about the functional parts of those same nerves, okay? Or are they just looking at that pain and then jumping on people? Um, we use instrumentation. Again, that's one of the tools that can help us be more specific. Instrumentation in terms of like our scans or that nervoscope that we run every time that, that looks at nerve pressure, okay? And it helps us narrow down where that pressure is exactly so we can mark that nerve and then outline that bone so we know again the next the next tool that we use is that x-ray which kind of tells us how that bone is positioned and then how three-dimensionally we have to move it to get it back to that position okay we also use if you feel me you know with my cold hands palpating or feeling on your spine for swelling and malposition and then sometimes, you know, I'll do a motion palpation. So there's static palpation is one tool. Motion palpation is another tool where, okay, I'm going to check that rotation, like, of your, of your neck and see, does it, does it stop over here or does it go all the way 90 degrees and both sides equal, okay? So those are, I think I hit all the tools. Those are the tools that a specific chiropractor, a Gonstead chiropractor is going to use, okay? And there are other specific techniques. They're still going to use those those tools, most of the specific techniques use these tools, okay? A general technician, um, they call it diversified. And the way they sell it in the schools, it, it, number one, it's just easy to teach, okay? When you got a thousand students, one to maybe three percent are going to stick it out long enough to learn a specific technique. So you got to keep their attention by giving them big pops, okay? So you could probably teach a monkey to do a general manipulation, grab their butt, grab their shoulder, and jump on them, all right? And it's easy to teach, like I said. So that's what they do in all the all the schools. And the re they when they call it diversified, they're going to teach uh, various manipulations, but really no specific adjustments, okay? Because again. It's hard to learn a specific adjustment, and it takes a lot of time to figure it out. Okay, it took me like three years to finally move one cervical the right direction, okay, the way I wanted it. Um, but the uh, diversified, the way they sell it in the schools is, 
well, don't you want, you know, don't just, don't just learn one technique. They actually preach against learning a specific technique. Why would you want to learn just one technique? You know, you want to have a lot of tools in your toolbox, but all they're doing is general manipulations, like a dozen different ways of general manipulations, where as they don't have a specific adjustment in their toolbox, okay? So diversified, again, if you're sitting down in Florida and, you, and I sent you somewhere and they don't do a specific technique and you know that and now you got to call around, ask what technique the doctor does. If the front desk person answers the phone and says, oh gosh, I don't even know, chances are they don't do a specific technique because chiropractors that do specific technique, that's kind of one of their selling points is they say, hey, we do this technique. And then people who are looking for that technique coming from somewhere else, they'll, they'll gravitate to that person, okay? So, sorry, <laughs> a little too high. I had to get the far side cartoon on there. <laughs> Blow it just a bit. So the nervous system, again, three main parts. We, we've got the, the pain sensitive portion, right? That's the smallest part of the nervous system. Uh, sensory nerves make up about 9% of the total nerves in the body. Okay, that's ones that you can feel. That doesn't mean they're pain sensitive. Some of them are like hot, cold sensors. Some of them are soft touch, uh, sharp, dull. There, there's different pain or, or sensory nerves that aren't necessarily pain sensitive, okay? But then we've got those uh, motor nerves that look, they, they uh, control muscles, all right? Think motor, like I'm gonna pick something up, I need to engage the motor in that, in that bicep muscle. That's a motor nerve that carries a message to a muscle to do a function. And then we've got those uh, autonomic or automatic nerves that control organs. So again, part of our um, analysis is to look at those three, okay? That's the instrumentation that we use. Actually, we look at all three of those. And then our uh, symptomatology, okay, is something that we can look at pain. If somebody has spasm, okay, then we know that that motor nerve is involved. Or if they have something visceral, meaning their, their stomach is, you know, sour or there's something going on with the organ, then we're looking at those autonomic nerves. So we kind of paint a picture in our brain of all the different parts of that nerve that are being affected, okay? And that's one of the scans that we do when, when people first come in. And then we do that x-ray. And a Gonstead is one of the few techniques, specific techniques, that actually uses a full spine. And why do we use a full spine? Because we understand that for every subluxation, there can be a compensation, okay? Meaning if my hip is misaligned down here, there's going to be a compensation. I'm going to lean. And then I'm going to have to curve back you know, my body's going to try and cut back to get my head over that center of gravity. Well, when you have a, a spine like this, in physics, remember Dr. Gonstead was well-versed in physics and, and loading, he would call this a load moment in physics or a buckling point in physics. So under gravity, gravity finds that angle. Now, it's going to tear up that disc. Gravity is going to really wreak havoc on that disc. That disc is absorbing that shock of gravity. And every time that person's moving, twisting, turning, being, you know, bending, picking things up, it's tearing away at that disc. And now they've got pain here, okay? That pain, most chiropractors are going to go just start pounding on that area. But if we just had an x-ray of here to here, you know, something like this, then this little buckling point is all we would see. And we wouldn't understand that, okay, that whole lean is compensating for this hip, okay? The body started leaning away from that hip. That was the first injury. And this being a compensation, the more that chiropractor pounds on it, the worse it's going to get. Like it'll feel good for about 20 minutes, and then all of a sudden they're in more pain than they were when they started. Again, if you're sitting in Florida right now, and you're saying, how come... This guy's adjusting this area when you were doing this, and now I feel worse after every adjustment. It's one of the signs of adjusting a compensation is that it gets worse, okay? 
usually that compensation, you can see how we're talking about this low back, the, the hip there causing that lean, and he never recovers fully from it, but causing that lean, and then here's the compensation. If you're adjusting above a subluxation, that'll make it worse, okay? If you're adjusting a compensation, which is already hypermobile, it's moving more than it's supposed to, it'll make it worse, okay? So that's why, if you're sitting in Florida right now, you know who I'm talking to. <laughs> and then that scope. If they don't use a scope, they don't do Gonstead, all right? I actually called up one of these guys, and um, I said, hey, you're on the Gonstead website, and it says here that you specifically do, you, you how, how did he phrase it? Basically that he only does Gonstead. And um, he's like, well, I'm on there for a referral board, and, you know, I do some Gonstead. Meaning what? You know, how do, how do you do some Gonstead? He said, well, sometimes I'll do, uh, I'll do my cervicals in the chair. Meaning he'll just do a general manipulation in the chair, and because it looks like what, what I do, you know, to the untrained eye, he does some Gonstead. So again, those people who were only here for a short amount of time before they flew south for the winter, they might not know the difference between a good adjustment and a general manipulation, okay? Because this guy was doing it in the chair, initially, my patient, she thought, oh, I think he's doing the same thing. But again, manipulation, general manipulation, he's affecting those compensations above the subluxation that I was working on, and she's getting headaches, and she's getting worse, and all these things are happening. So did he run a scope? No, he didn't run a scope. Okay, that's a clue right there. If the guy isn't running a nervoscope, he doesn't do Gonstead, chances are he doesn't do a specific technique. Because like I said, most of the specific techniques will use that instrument just to help them find that specific nerve pressure, okay? Whether it's activator specific, whether it's upper cervical, um, cox, there, there's a number of different specific techniques that will use that, that nervoscope, okay? We didn't invent that. Dr. Gon said didn't invent that. Um, he was taught to use that by, by Didi's people. They were using it back in the 20s, okay? Or a version of it. We don't do the flying seven. So if you're getting that, the old, you know, jump on you, crank your head left, crank it right, and a lot of rotation, okay, where they pin the shoulder down to the table and then wrench on you, sometimes I'll do a hip or an L5, you know, a lumbar on a side posture because somebody can't lay on their belly, okay? I have a, a pregnant mama right now. She just can't lay on her belly. So we've got to do it on the side bench. But I never pin that person's shoulder back and then, crank their, their hip forward, Gonstead adjusts from a neutral position, okay? So we always have the spine, maybe I'll traction up, but I'm not going to push it back to the bench and then bring this forward. We're going to kind of traction to hold the person on the bench, but then I'm going to set that bone, maybe with my fingers, the, th the, the same three-dimensional movement that I would be doing if they were laying. You know, I'm just going to use a different contact and a different part of my hand to do it. But... Again, another clue, if they're cranking your head way as far as it'll go one direction and then pushing it further and then, again, cranking it as far as it'll go one direction and pushing it further, that's, that's a clue. They don't do Gonstead. That's, that's a general manipulation. And, again, same thing in the, in the low back. If they're cranking you know, the shoulder back and then bringing the hip forward, general manipulation versus a specific adjustment. Okay? So... We, we gather so much information in our new patient exam. Um, that's why we're, we're able to give a specific adjustment because we do the symptomatology, we do the palpation, we do the x-rays, we run that instrument, instrumentation. Um, we don't do therapies or modalities. Um, Dr. Sean isn't here to tell the story, but he uh, got in trouble for challenging a, a professor, questioning a professor back in chiropractic college. And he, Jason, and I were all supposed to be at the same student clinic for our internship. And Sean got stuck at the student clinic, and uh, because he was a Gonstead guy, they wanted to teach him a lesson, so they had him run in the therapies. And he was actually part of a study where the placebo 
of, of the therapy was they just turned the machine off and then ran the therapy, okay? So Sean, his job was to do uh, ultrasound on X number of patients a day. Half of them, the machine wasn't even on, okay? The other half, it was on. Well, guess what happened? They couldn't even tell the difference. They couldn't tell the difference in, so <laughs> the long and the short, we don't do those therapies just because I feel like it would be adding a, a propeller to a jet engine, you know? Your body has the ability to heal and regulate itself as long as there's no interference. So I think the best thing that we can do would be to remove that interference, that subluxation, and the rub-a-dub-dub, you know, these therapies. When, when I was training in and uh, had to do some time with one of the chiropractors here in town, I'm not going to say his name, but he told me, well, we just do two therapies per visit so that we can build our insurance. Okay. He wasn't really convinced that these therapies did anything. He was just telling me, well, yeah, you got to do therapies if, if you're going to make big money because you got to be able to bill, you know, two therapies per visit. And we're talking every time a patient goes into that guy's office, it's 200 bucks. You're not leaving with, you know, a $30 adjustment or something like that. So not that we don't uh, recognize that some chiropractors, I, I wanted to address this because there's a, there's a guy in town who specifically does activator, who was trained by the guy I was trained by, his brother. They both did specific techniques. Activator is a specific technique if you do the full protocol, okay? He does all seven tools that, that we do for analysis, so he knows the specifics of that subluxation, and he's addressing it specifically, but he has wrist issues, so you have to use an activator, okay? He might have to click on that thing a hundred times to get everything leveled out, but he'll do it, all right? And I gotta respect that guy, and give them props because I've had people with with uh, severe osteoporosis or somebody who just comes in and says, you know what, I don't like this technique. Is there anybody in town that does something? I'll, I'll send them Brent's way because I know the guy is doing a, a specific analysis. He's addressing subluxations and he's doing it specifically. So we don't do that here because if you're going to do a technique, I feel like you should be a master of it, not just take a 90-day course in something. Like a lot of chiropractors, again, that I sent somebody down in Arizona to a chiropractor, and she said, well, he does acupuncture. Should I get some acupuncture for this, that, or the other? And I'm like, the guy took a 90-day course in acupuncture. I'm not, you know, I'm not bashing acupuncture. I'm bashing the amount of training that a chiropractor gets in acupuncture. The guy that I refer to, he's a third generation acupuncturist. So, I mean, he's a master of what he does. If you're going to go somewhere for a service or a technique, go to somebody who's, you know, a master, who's, who's working on mastering that technique, okay? So, we're the only chiropractic office right now in, in you know, Jason's in the other building, but we're the only technique, I guess, in, in the St. Cloud area that will take a before and after x-ray and actually show you the difference there and hold ourselves accountable to making that change and that correction. In chiropractic college, they just outright tell kids, you can't make change on an x-ray because they're discouraging those kids from taking x-rays because that would mean, now you gotta be specific. Now you gotta be responsible for what's on that x-ray. So don't take x-rays because you'll be responsible for what's on it. That's what they tell us in chiropractic college, okay? So we're the only office that, that, that's taking a full spine and holding themselves accountable for what's on that x-ray. There are specific techniques that do upper cervical that will take a before and after, but full spine, we're, we're the only ones. So some of the like scientific benefits to chiropractic, when, uh, when I talk about, I'm gonna walk off camera just to grab a book here. I was talking a few, uh, a few presentations ago about some of the studies and, and the research that was done on chiropractic. And this book, Subluxation Specific Adjustment Specific, 
is all research. Okay, that was research done at at the the Palmer Clinic in Davenport, Iowa. So each one of these is a case study. Pretty much every page in there is a patient with a case study with with uh, a disease of some sort that they were looking at, and what they're finding in their in their research and even still today in the subluxation research is that one of the benefits of chiropractic is that your immune system is 200 percent stronger or reacts better to pathogens okay average chiropractic patient pays 50 percent less in medical doctor visits okay um, a lot less spent on health care so these are just some of the benefits to specific chiropractic work okay we're the the world's largest drugless healing profession and again i just want to i want to talk about um that the difference between a specific chiropractor and somebody who's just doing general manipulation because i get people all the time who they come in here and and we find a fracture or they come in here and and have had uh, surgeons actually referring their patients post surgery who still have pain after a spinal surgery here okay they're not sending them anywhere else in town they're sending them here because we will actually adjust somebody post surgery where most chiropractors won't they're scared to death why because they're not doing a specific adjustment it's a shot in the dark if that person's going to get better or get worse okay and if they adjust the person or manipulate the person and the person gets better, awesome, thank God. But if they manipulate them and they get worse, they have no idea what they did, what they moved wrong or how to correct it, okay? If I adjust somebody specifically who's post-surgery and, and I'm adjusting that bone three-dimensionally and they get better, I know exactly what did it. But if they don't get better, I know what I did so I can change it to get that better result. Okay, that's why those those surgeons are sending people with fractures, with uh, fusions, um, and I've had actually people who are post stroke sent over from the VA, and um, one of the one of the best was a guy who basically one side you know paralyzed from that stroke, and we're specifically adjusting his first cervical and he's getting that function back, okay? Nobody else would touch that guy because he was post-stroke, okay? He had already had a stroke. And the number one indicator as to whether you're going to have a stroke is have you had a previous stroke, right? So we'll adjust somebody specifically who's had a stroke because my belief is if we don't fix whatever is, is going on, they're probably going to have another stroke, all right? And what we found in this guy's instance, that first cervical, that big bone that your, your skull sits on top, there's two holes in that bone that the vertebral artery runs up through to your brainstem. And he had a VBI, a vertebral basilary insufficiency. So a stroke in his brainstem of that vertebral artery, okay? And he had quite a bit of rotation, about 15 degrees of rotation in that first cervical. So it's literally kinking off the vertebral artery running, you know, circulation up to his brainstem. And then he has this stroke, all right, this vertebral insufficiency to his brainstem. So nobody else would touch this guy, right, because they're thinking, well, he's going to have another stroke and I don't want to be the one to touch him before he has another stroke because they'll blame me. But I'm thinking, I know what's wrong with this guy. I can see three-dimensionally what's going on here. And I understand the, uh, the terminology or the, uh, the, the effect of what, what's going on there, and we can correct that. So we correct that specifically. The guy didn't have another stroke. He actually got that function back. So the difference, again, is we understand what we're doing and and what worked or what didn't work and if we we do something and it didn't work we know what to change because we were specific enough 
and we record everything. So if I adjust somebody and they don't get better, I'll usually give them three adjustments and if they're not getting better, I'm missing some, okay? So I, uh, I could talk all night about this, but if anybody wants to check out these books, they can. They're boring as heck, but sometimes you hit something really cool and um, some of these case studies are really interesting. Um, they weren't adjusting people with neck pain, back pain, headaches. They were adjusting people with, you know, seizure disorders, cancer, tumors, you know, just crazy stuff. And they're adjusting them once or twice and then watching them and observing as their body changes over, over time. So thank you guys for coming tonight. Thanks for tuning in. And again, if I sent you somewhere and you're, you're questioning, does this guy really do the technique? Call Rhonda, text me. We'll find somebody in your area that actually does a good specific technique. Okay. Thanks again, you guys. Have a great evening.